Adaptive leadership explained in less than four minutes. No matter our position, our role, our context, for each of us the opportunity for leadership is on the other side of the question, what should I do? An important first step in personal leadership is then to understand our own purpose and the alignment of our own purpose with the work we're doing. Imagine being able to see everything, all the things we know in our organization to be true, all the facts we can collect, all the things we see, in one simple gaze. This is the pool of data, our reality, of our own context. But it's a place we don't spend much time in, because we want to leap into action. But when we win the urge to get things done immediately, and start entertaining multiple interpretation of what we see, multiple explanation of what happens, little by little we climb up a ladder. We start seeing more than one thing, more than one reason, more than one way things are. We are on our way to the balcony, above the day-to-day -day fray, a fresh new perspective where we begin to see differently. Two very distinct kinds of work get into focus from the balcony. A kind of work is dealing with technical problems, the expertise-driven expertise deliverables that require efficient execution based on current know-how, control, following of procedures. The technical work is the work that you do every day for 90% of the time in your day-to-day -day job. For this work, clear authority structures provide a routine of protection, order and direction. Great work like this is performed every day through procedures, plans, known responses in every organization. Yet, this is not the work of leadership. There is another kind of work, much smaller and much harder to make out and very murky, is the work of dealing with adaptive challenges. A very different kind of work we don't have yet an instruction manual for. Work for which much more than a quick fix is required. Work that requires people to rethink their own values, loyalties, and habits. This is the work of leadership, and the only way out is engaging consciously and collectively in learning, unlearning, and relearning, to build what's next in the middle of uncertainty and ambiguity. Now this work is no more than 10% of what you do every day, but this work is about dancing on the edge of what you know, or what you expect, or what you consider true, or what you would do by default. It's a place where you need to experiment with a sense that things may go well or things might go wrong. And you can do it alone. You gather a group of people willing to roll up their sleeve and factions quickly surface. A group of people are in favor, people they are against, others they are okay with the status quo. They sense the danger and do an unspoken calculation of what's at stake their progresses make. The risk of that they may lose status, appear incompetent, disappoint people they care about, look bad. Inevitably, conflict arises. Your job will be to orchestrate the conflict, as people in this work become fearful their expertise, authority, security being challenged, insufficient or not helpful. Yet, the work of leadership here is holding people through this loss. Imagine having a hand on a thermostat, turning the heat up and down to keep people fired up enough around purpose without having them boil over at their own source of uncertainty. Finally, you reach a sweet spot of leadership, where innovation flows and people start asking new questions, speaking the unspoken, question their own assumption, test driving novel practices, building fragile new partnership across organizational lines. And in doing this, they start making progress on critical issues. Together, 